Hello everyone, my guest today is Brett Owens. He's co-founded and successfully bootstrapped two software as a service companies that are growing and profitable today. He's currently the marketing director and co-founder at Lead Dino, an instant affiliate marketing solution for small businesses. Brett, are you ready to take us to the top? I am, yes sir. All right, so you said you listen to the show, you're loving it, why do you love it? Well, I like the specifics, they're pretty hard hitting, uh, so I'm uh, <laughs> ready for that. <sighs> Uh, and uh, yeah, I like the nuts and bolts. I like the nuts and bolts uh, story of how people uh, built their companies and I guess why, why they do what they do. Well, so you know what I usually ask. So save me some energy. Tell me what you can right now about the company and then I'll dive into some stories that I think might be valuable for my audience. Yeah, sure, sure. So we did, we started Lead Dino in 2012. We launched the product in April of 2013. So we had a pretty quick uh, turnaround in terms of getting something to market so that uh, first year of despair that I know you love. Uh, we uh, closed the year with a whopping, I think we had $3,000 in recurring monthly revenue. 12 or 13? Three. One, two, three. Sorry, 20, 2013 was that? Yeah, that was 2013. Yeah, so like exactly. 13 yep. grand, you said? Three grand. Three grand. Three, <laughs> three, three co founders. So we had a grand each of revenue. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind expenses. Um, so needless to say, uh, we worked for free for a few years. We did, we did bootstrap, as you said, uh, in the, in the intro. So, uh, worked our way up and today we have, uh, uh feeding, uh, ourselves and, uh, other mouths to feed overall. We're at about, uh, 10 or so people in terms of full-time, uh, equivalents here and, uh, doing uh, larger revenue. We're above seven figures now in terms of annual, uh, revenue numbers. That's great. And how many customers are you serving now? And we have uh, 20, oh, we're nearing, we're over 2,400 on the customer side of Lead Dino. Okay. And then we also have an affiliate network that we launched that plugs in with it. You, you don't have to be a Lead Dino customer to join that, but many of, uh, many of them are uh, Lead Dino customers or they join and then see how awesome Lead Dino is and sign up. But we have 1,800 merchants on that side as well that we're supporting. Okay, and those are separate. So Lead Dino, there's 2,400 plus another 1,800 on the affiliate side. Yeah, so call it about maybe just call it over three thousand, maybe or so. Okay. Uh, total so, yeah. so, so tell us what Lead Dino does. What do you, What are you doing? Obviously, it's a SaaS model. Yeah, so Lead Dino, and I know you've uh, talked about affiliate marketing before, and you know uh, Amazon's probably the, the classic example everyone's familiar with because you can get an Amazon link if you want to promote uh, a link to a product, get some sort of commission uh, from Amazon. You're going to link to that. What we do is basically help somebody who sells. Uh, direct. They have their own online website. They have their own online store and they want to launch their own affiliate program. Uh, that's what we're helping them do. So a plug and play and especially convenient for people using Shopify, BigCommerce, other e-commerce platforms. We have apps integrations that they can just click and plug us in there. And what are people paying on average for this thing per month? On average, so our pricing is between, uh, it starts at 29 a month and then it goes up to 249 a month, actually up to 349 uh, but we're under $100 a month in terms of what they're paying. And I've just in my experience found that to be a pretty good sweet spot for small business where uh, under 100 is a, uh, I would say, a good price point for a serious yeah. uh, business. Well, so if I take the, that 2400 times a $29 ARPU, that puts you about 70 grand a month in revenue. But you're north of 88 per month right now, right? That puts you above a million in ARR. Mm -hmm. And what does growth rate look like right now year over year? Uh, growth rate, I believe we grew about 30% year over year uh, last year. So 20, that's 2017 over 2016. That's great. And so then, you're, yeah, so you're doing about what, 60 grand a month, 30, about 13 months ago, something like that. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Yep. yep. Growing 30%. So first of all, that's great for a bootstrap company, 30% year over year. Where are you getting the growth from? How are customers finding you? Combination. So uh, we're kind of just visible out there. When we started uh, the company, one of the things that we, we, figured we would do, I mean, I guess we had nothing to lose because we were new, um, is a lot of the classic affiliate systems, kind of sort of the who's who that was out there. Uh, they're kind of behind sort of veiled gardens where you almost couldn't get a demo without talking to a salesperson. And we said, well, hey, we got nothing to lose. Let's just, uh, I'll do these demos. We'll put them out there on the website. Sure, uh, competitors can also uh, view them, but we'll just kind of get that stuff out there. So that's what we do. We're real active uh, where we're posting um, stuff on our blog. We send out newsletters every day uh, featuring uh, affiliate programs uh, in our industry. Just sent out the adult newsletter today with Valentine's Day coming up. Um, figured that would be appropriate. <laughs> um, so we so we get some good organic visibility and then also through app stores, that's a good source uh, from integration partners as well. So from the Shopify, as I mentioned, BigCommerce, WordPress, WooCommerce, yep. uh, those types of those types of app stores. Cool. And I will add a note for anyone listening going, wait, did he just say Valentine's Day? You're, oh, you're hearing this probably in 
June, July, probably in August time frame. I just want to let you guys know that because we have a huge waiting list for the show, I only release one a day on the podcast. But if you want them all immediately, you get them basically the day I record them at getlatka.com. So Brett, I want to put that out there in case people want more of you sooner. That's why they need to be on your list. You <laughs> all right, good. So um, why would somebody use your affiliate solution over like a share of sale? So one of the big uh, benefits, and we do have um, user, we have customers who use both. They've used uh, a share of sale uh, for many years and, and, and uh, uh, of course, a very good, product, comprehensive product. Um, but with that, it's got, it's got 20 years of features in it. And uh, their big focus today is they've got uh, the influencers they work with, and especially kind of the hot term now is for 2018, is almost more micro-influencers where they're turning these folks who have, uh, and they, uh, often their times are customers are there. So they're taking folks who have, I mean, everyone has, social media following today. They've got a Facebook uh, following. They've got Instagram followers. They've got you know family who are, who are following them or friends. Um, so turning these people and helping them share uh, their experience, their link onto social media. But stuff has to be really easy for them to share. So that's where we've got a very uh, simple affiliate dashboard that does everything. We've got a little one click. So you feel like uh, you're easier. Yeah. yeah okay. Easier to do. So you just hit, a, hit the Facebook button, for example, pops up Facebook has a post already to go. You hit it one more time and it shares. Tell me about churn. Oh, churn. Uh, yeah. So churn's a good question. So churn is in the high single digits. Our churn is actually, I would say high for a SaaS company. Monthly? Uh, yeah, monthly. Okay. So call it like 8% logo churn per month, something like that. Yeah, I would say that's, uh, I would say that's fair. And why is it so high? Uh, it is high because a lot of, uh, and I think you see in e-commerce, there's just high churn in general. Um, in the e-commerce world. I don't know what Shopify is. Uh, Shopify is public, so they might have the churn um, numbers. My sense is that their churn would be on the higher end as well. You, um, we'll see. It was something that we kind of beat ourselves up about for a while where companies, uh, you know, people sign up and then they leave and you feel bad and you find that the reason that they left is uh, oftentimes they shut down their online store. Yep. Um, so that's just kind of, I, I think, comes with the territory um, in terms of small business. So what we try to do is just help the serious people as much as we can. We do try to help the dreamers get traction. We do our best. Uh, that, that was a big motivation for us launching the affiliate network. But yeah, there is um, there is just seems to be high churn in this type of, uh, especially when, when working with small business. Yeah, rounding out the unit economics, what are you paying to acquire new customers? Um, and then to acquire a new customer, I'll tell you what I'd be happy with because I don't actually know what we're paying. Uh, yeah. to, uh, our, our numbers are actually probably pretty good because we get so much from organic. But I would say, I rule of thumb, I'm happy if I, if I about a year's worth, so let's say, well, let's call it six months. So if I can spend three hundred dollars or less to acquire a customer, I would be, I would be happy with that. Yep, and that that you equate that to about six months of revenue. Yeah, about six months. Sure. Yep. And then, do you do projections and calculations? Like, what do you assume the average customer stays with you in terms of months and dollars? Yeah, that's why um, it's very binary where we've got uh, folks who are some folks with us stay uh, for a while or forever if they're serious about it. And then you do get the folks who uh, we are very blessed to have them in our lives for the period of time that they are. But they're very quick where they come in, they're here for a month or two, and then they, they move on and, yep. and, and they're gone. Um, so we, I kind of look at it, it, it with that, with that, where the six months I think is kind of conservative. I think we could pay up to a year, um, but I like to kind of do more guerrilla type tactics anyway. So I, I always look at, I like to be on the conservative side. That's why, that's why I pick the six month. Number. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the 8% monthly churn and you do one divided by 0.08, that means the average customer would stay with you for about 12 and a half months at a, you know, call it 40 ish a month price point. You know, they're worth their, you know, 50, you know, 40 bucks times 12 months. Obviously you do the math there. Um, right. what you're saying is you've got some folks obviously that stay longer, stay some stay shorter. The question I have for you though is: Have you have you te- with churn being that high? Have you tested just selling uh, one time six hundred like a, up at a price point that's higher than your current LTV? Oh, up front one time? Yeah, just one. Yeah. No, we've never tested that. We've also never tested doing something um, yearly. We've always been flat monthly and no setup costs either. Where I know some of the big networks. Um, and that's always been a drawing point for us. I'm sure it does contribute to the higher churn. I know some of the big networks, they do 500 to 1,000 uh, up front to yep. get in, which would be to your point. Um, no, we've never tested that. And I, I don't think we have any current plans to test it, but it's an interesting thought. Yeah, it's always interesting because you just don't know what's going to happen. Like, for example, if someone pays 500 bucks one time, are they more likely to spend the time to learn how to actually get the system going, right? D- d- does the money actually drive the usage? 
Yeah, it could. Uh, that's a good point. We did have a failed experiment with a freemium type model where we <laughs> offered uh, free versions and that was a complete mess um, because the type of customer you get free is not the type uh, where even even we found 19 to be uh, maybe didn't have as many serious people as we wanted. So that's where we kind of settled in on 29 is that uh, lower floor in yep. terms of practicing to find a serious person. Now you said there's 10 of you guys. Where's everybody based? Uh, so we've got five here in the office in Sacramento, and then we have contractors uh, basically all over from here to, uh, you know, I've got people in Bangladesh, South Africa, um, so you name it, Philippines, New York City. So we've got folks kind of spread out all over. That's great. And are you looking at, I mean, what do you want to do with the company? Keep growing organically? Do you think you'd ever raise? Uh, what do you, how are you thinking about capital? No, I think we're pretty against raising. I mean, a lot, well, a lot of the reason that we do this is we like not having real jobs. And I think you, you raise and uh, you, you kind of bring that element into it. But also, I don't think we I, I don't think we I don't think we need to to do what we want to do in terms of just continuing to grow. And I mean, it's nothing too fancy, it's just one foot in front of the other. Mm-hmm. So I think if we continue to grow at this type of rate. We're happy with that. And uh, that's what we would be happy doing for the next 20 or so years. We're all pretty young guys. So how old are you? there i'm 36 that's good that's good yeah you, you still get the young checkbox right <laughs> yeah until For you're now. 40 okay. until you're 40 yeah. then you're yeah. old right no i'm just kidding all right Brett. let's wrap up here with the famous five number one what is your favorite business book so i'll go with a uh, classic it's got a little bit of a cheesy name but the dale carnegie how to win friends and influence people i i think what i learned from that book and it's actually one that i listened to on audio and i listened to it a few times it's just looking at everything from the other person's perspective and i think that helps when you're building a company, building a product where if you're always looking at it through their lens, that's helpful as well as on the marketing side where you're trying to think, okay, well, what is this small business? What is this small e-commerce owner trying to get done? And then you gear stuff accordingly because you do hear a ton of product feedback all the time. But if you look at it through that lens of what they're really trying to do, I find that to be helpful. Name a CEO in Sacramento that you really enjoy getting coffee or dinner with. Oh, that's a good one. I got. I'll go with my boy uh, Aaron Klein with uh, Riskalyze. I always and I always tell him I always troll his Facebook feed. I think people might think we're uh, lovers or something. But I always say he's <laughs> such a handsome, uh, such a handsome gentleman. But he's done a great job of building Riskalyze, which I'll, I'll give them a little plug. They do uh, financial uh, risk analysis for advisors. He's out in Auburn. I was going to say I feel like he has been on the show, but I could be wrong. Um, uh, is he playing in the cybersecurity space at all, or no? Uh, they are doing, uh, it's a SaaS platform, but they sell it to financial advisor. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Interesting. Okay. Uh, number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. So I guess I can, oh, you know what? Let's go, let's do live chat. Live chat has been very good for us. Uh, what's we, the website though? Like live chat.com. Yeah, exactly. So it's live chat.com and it's what it sounds. It gives you that little chat box, um, on, on the website. That's something that we've had, I think since early days, I want to say, 2014, I think we put it on the website. It was late 2013. And I was manning the chat initially. It was miserable. Um, yeah. I mean, I had all these chats popping up um, at once. Uh, so we ended up hiring someone better than me to do it. And we've got uh, actually three uh, chat operators now on there. But yeah, I'll give a shout out. Live, live chat's been great. Are you finding that those hard costs out of your balance sheet in the form of you know employee salaries are worth it, having that re- short reaction time on live chat? Oh, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great support tool. Um, it, it's funny because you, if you don't have it on there, um, you, you don't actually hear everything and see everything. So let's say we were getting at the time, I mean, this is 2014. So let's say we're, we were getting, um, we would get five emails a day, two phone calls. You install chat, all of a sudden you have 25 chats a day. And, yeah. and these are just kind of quiet people who, who are there. Now, sometimes if it's support related, you, you, you wish that you weren't hearing from it, but in reality, it's good that you're hearing everything. Good that you're able to help them out. And on the sales side, it's been a great sales tool. I would say, uh, I, I know you love the numbers. I would say probably one in two people who signed up for our an account with us hit us up on live chat before. All right, number four. How many hours do you sleep to get every night? I'm pretty normal. I'm about seven, eight. Okay, that's good. And what's your situation? Married, single, you have kids? Yeah, I married two kids. So, I mean, the seven, eight's uh, broken up, although my wife's great. Uh, it takes care of the newborn. So, yeah, I've got a three-year-old and a three-month-year-old. Ooh, and how old are you? Oh, yeah, you said you're 35, right? Uh, yeah, 36. 36. Okay, last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Yeah, that's a good question because I made, I made a million mistakes and I kind of thought about that question. And I mean, I don't want to sound too uh, uh, cheesy, but I almost wouldn't do it different just because you, you make all the mistakes. Um, I had another uh, company before this that we started, Lead Dino for, Bootstrap That Company, uh, kind of grinded it into mediocrity for 10 years. Not that we didn't do good things, um, we just never kind of hit the levels that I wish with Lead Dino. So in hindsight, I guess 
I should have sold it earlier. Um, but knowing, but still the, the whole, the entire process is valuable. So I'm Did not you sure. sell that thing for a good return or was it like a flat, it was kind of like a soft oh, landing. No, it was a terrible return. Yeah, yeah. no, it was the, yeah, no, the company still owed me personally on, on the balance sheet, like $300,000 because I ended up being the angel investor and it wasn't pretty, it wasn't like I had the money. Yeah. It was like a forwarding off a credit card on the company balance sheet. And then I got, uh, not even whatever, 30 cents on the dollar for just the debt owed when I sold it. But in yeah. terms of, so yeah, no, financial. It's tricky. A lot of people do that. I mean, a lot of people build a healthy little business. They feel good, a safe salary, but it's never going to really take off, but they never, they never kill it. So congratulations yeah. for killing it. And congratulations <laughs> for launching Lead Dino. I'm excited to watch you. Guys, there you had it. He would have uh, maybe thought about selling his first company faster. Now building Lead Dino launched, let it, what did he tell me, back in 2012. Now 10 people full-time in Sacramento area. Again, growing the team there at 2,400 customers, paying on average 40-ish bucks a month. They're north of a million bucks in ARR, growing uh, about 30, 40% year over year. So doing about 60 grand a month just 13 months ago. CACTA LTV is super healthy. Churns a little high, but that's maybe part of the business and they're looking at interesting ways to solve that. So Brett, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Hey, thank you, Nathan.